The following video is intended for grown-ups. It contains many words, some of which have emotional content. If you find yourself having a gut reaction or flying off the handle, please pause the video and get a grip. Hello, Fluffy McDeath here. I've been meaning to say something about the Charlie Hebdo thing for a long, long time, but it's not topical. That was uh, the ancient past now. Not apparently that ancient, uh, because it's still an issue. I get to talk about it now because somebody tried to shoot cartoonists just recently. But more than that, I'd like to talk about Thunderfoot and TJ's reactions to the uh, more recent attempt at shooting and the former shooting. And I'm quite irked, I must say. Uh, one of the things that just blew my mind with Thunderfoot's sudden U-turn. Okay, I better explain that a bit. Philosophically, I see a couple of things as being very much the same and Thunderfoot apparently doesn't make the connection. I am more or less in agreement with his position on the don't tell me what to wear, teach men not to rape. And Thunderfoot's position on that I believe is quite reasonable. It's like you cannot, you cannot rely on changing the behaviours of other people to protect yourself. Now, let's put aside the fact that most rapes aren't, as far as I know, the stranger rapes that we all imagine as being, you know, rape. A lot of acquaintance rape goes on. Let's forget the fact that there's a lot of disagreement on what the definition of rape is. I mean, there's a certain level we can all get together and understand say, oh, you know, that sort of violent, um, confrontational, forced, Okay, we'll all be in agreement with that. Then there's like, you know, all sorts of sliding scale of like, well, if it's a black man and a white woman, she can't possibly consent, so it must be rape. Or um, there are people that say all PIV is rape. Seriously. So, forget about that sliding scale. Here is Thunderfoot's point. Don't rely on telling other people not to attack you. Take precautions. If wearing um, provocative dress is a factor, not saying that it is, but if it is, then you should consider not wearing provocative dress for your own safety. Okay, of course he gets screamed at, says, no, 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 and I admit that he also admits this, the rapist is always in the wrong. Fine, but if you are going to dress provocatively, that is a risk you are taking on yourself. Right. Now, we go to Charlie Hebdo. Some cartoonists get shot for drawing the Prophet Muhammad and he's all, there's never an excuse for killing people for drawing the Prophet Muhammad. He, he's, he's gone completely to the other side. He doesn't say, he doesn't say. The cartoonists are taking a risk. He has flipped to the side, don't tell cartoonists not to draw Muhammad. Tell Islamists not to shoot cartoonists. You see, he's taken the don't tell me what to wear side. Because now it's a principle of free speech, but it's not, it's exactly the same principle. It's like, you can do whatever you want provided you understand the risks and if you are going to set about pissing people off because that's what you're doing you have taken a risk now not every man is a rapist so you're probably fine to wear what you want most of the time almost no muslims and let's do the math here because it's what roughly two billion muslims and how many were involved in shooting in charlie Hebdo? it's like two so you want to figure out what that percentage of Muslims or like cartoon murdering gunmen, it's pretty pretty tiny percentage. Now we've got another couple in Texas who looked like they were going to try and shoot themselves a few cartoonists as well. But here's the point. When you draw pictures of the Prophet Muhammad you know you're pissing people off. It's an emotional issue. There's absolutely no sense to this. It's just an emotional issue. 
people feel that you are doing it to offend them. And since they have asked you not to, and they've told you it's offensive, you probably are. You're doing it to offend them. And when you offend them, they are not going to act rationally. And most of them will try and ignore you. Some of them will protest you. And a teeny tiny percentage might actually be so incensed that they're going to take actions into their own hands. Well, so there you go. I still say the cartoonists can draw the Prophet Muhammad if they want, but they have to understand that they're taking a risk. And if they get shot, we shouldn't all jump up and down about how they shouldn't have been shot, because that's a given. We should understand that they were willing to take that risk to make that statement, that it's fine to offend Muslims. Now, offending people is not the best way to address their beliefs. It is a good way to consolidate their beliefs. So I think a lot of this, let's just offend Muslims by drawing the Prophet Muhammad, is pointless. It's easy for us to do. It's easy. Let's, let's admit that. We don't have any connection to that. When we draw the Prophet Muhammad, we don't have any feelings about it. So that's fine. Right? It would be like a person who can't feel pain, and there are some of them, they tend to die fairly young because, hey, pain's actually very useful for telling you about things you shouldn't do. But it would be like a person who couldn't feel pain, ironing his hand, and then saying, why don't you iron your hand? And then ironing your hand for you, because he can't see how painful it is. All right. So, it's easy to draw the Prophet Muhammad because we have no emotional connection to it. But the things that we are emotionally connected to, and just try and draw funny Auschwitz cartoons. Just try and draw funny Auschwitz cartoons and get them published and have people laughing. <laughs> See what happens to you. Right? That's something that people have a strong emotional feeling about. I've got to admit, I wasn't in the Holocaust. I wasn't around that time. I've actually got no connection to it. I've got no family. I could, I could draw some, well, probably not hilarious um, cartoons about the Holocaust, but let's face it, the Prophet Muhammad cartoons weren't exactly hilarious. But I would be offending people, and I would know it. And where I live, it would cost me. It would cost me to do that. And I can say, oh, I'm doing it for free speech, etc., 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 but people aren't going to listen to that. Or well, very few people are going to listen to that. Because it's an emotional issue. They will be offended. So, when we organize, when I say we, in the West, organize to have these offensive competitions, so in response to the Norwegian cartoons, I think Iran went off and did, they had their Holocaust conference. Let's talk about the Holocaust. Was it 6 million? Was it 5 million? Was it 3 million? Was it any? Let's have a talk about that. And our media went ballistic because those frickin' Iranians, really, don't they see? Don't they understand how offensive this is? What, are they nuts? We couldn't talk about it, logically. I mean, I could, like I say, water off a duck's back over here. But, culturally, untouchable. Culturally untouchable. You look at Charlie Hebdo, you look what they've done to Christians, Muslims, attack Jews, eh. No, they tend not to manage to get away with that sort of stuff. As soon as it's labelled anti-Semitic, it falls off the radar. It's not free speech anymore. It's hate speech, you see hate speech. So we have the problem that all free speech is not necessarily free speech. There is that limit, that classical limit, yelling fire in a theatre, a fire in a crowded theatre where there is no fire. Let's put all the caveats in there. You're not allowed to do that. Why? Because it incites a dangerous situation. That is the reason we're supposedly not allowed to question the Holocaust, because apparently if we did, and it turned out it was only three million, 
would rampage and kill all the Jews. There's nonsense, of course, but I mean, there is a fear that that would happen. And yet, we can say whatever hateful things we want about Islam and Muslims because free speech. Doesn't matter how angry they get, free speech. So, the Norwegian cartoons were actually designed to incite a reaction, and they got it. If you look into who was behind that, and again here in Garland, Texas, with Pamela Geller, look at Pamela Geller. She designed that to incite, that draw the Prophet Muhammad is to incite. And hey, she lucked out. She got her gunman. She's absolutely delighted. The reason people do these things publicly, I know there are some people who earnestly believe that they're doing it for free speech, but people like Pamela Geller do it to attract nutcases. And in this case, she got lucky, nutcases came. And then she can point at them and say, look at those crazy Muslims. That's why we have to fight them. You see, we have a culture war going on. We're currently killing Muslims. It's in our geostrategic political interest to kill Muslims. And so, just when, like when Hitler was killing Jews, you have to demonize that population. You have to show that they're less than you, that they're evil somehow, fundamentally, that it's okay to kill them. If we thought they were all nice, and friendly and just like us, we'd have difficulty with our governments killing them so much. Right now, they tend to you know, shield us from most of the killing by not running it on the news, but you can still see it. But really, if we're actually gonna go ahead and kill them in a major way, we have to hate them. And the best way to hate them is to see that they hate us and the things we value like freedom. Even if we don't really value, you know, insulting the prophet that much, it's good that we can do it and that they hate it, it shows how violent and primitive and base they are. So, TJ, you don't think that it was an incitement. You don't think that Pamela Geller was just doing it for the attention it got from Muslims? Because, let's face it, who's actually really interested in the draw the Mo Prophet Muhammad thing who isn't a Muslim? Who really cares that much? So I'm sure, like even in Texas, most of those Muslims who live around there, A, didn't hear about it, B, didn't care about it, C, didn't even show up to protest it really, and then you got two crazy gunmen who get shot right away, so we don't even know, you know, what their story is. They're conveniently dead. They can't speak about, you know, what they intended to do and what their motivations were. See, the thing is, I'm sure a lot of the people who attended to do the drawing had those sort of free speech motives or anti-religious motives or let's break this taboo motives. But people like Pamela Geller are propagandists and their motives are quite much darker. She wanted a reaction. She wanted a reaction she could use and she got one. Lucky her. But this, what she did, it would be like getting some feminist instigator to arrange to have a bunch of drunken girls strip at a wild frat party on the grounds that they're just expressing their right to dress however they feel. When something goes horribly wrong, or even a bit wrong, she can whip up the media and stand there outraged, giving her speeches about how women at drunken frat parties should be able to wear as much or as little or as not a stitch at all as they want. All men you see are rapists, or at least serial abusively touchists. That's not honest. 
And that's what this issue is about for me. I see it as people being deliberately provocative to Muslims specifically. You do not see that kind of provocation against the Jews or against Christians, even though they claim, you know, every time you don't say Merry Christmas, then they're being, you know, well, whatever. If you were to put up a giant poster somewhere in the south of Jesus Christ taking it up the hoop and liking it from the Prophet Muhammad, slap that on a giant billboard and then ask the Christians that come by, hey, does that poster of the Prophet Muhammad offend you? One or two of them might say yes, but it's not because it's the Prophet Muhammad. Anyway. I'm going to start to ramble if I don't stop now. I think I already have rambled. All right. Well, that's all I'm going to say on the matter for now. Fluffy McDeath, signing off. <laughs>